Okay, I realize it's been a while since I posted any videos. It's been more than a month, I'm sorry. It's been a busy month. So today we're gonna to talk about this case that's in front of us. Um, this is a patient who had presented um, with some pain on her lower left, tooth number 18. So the issue that we had with her, or that she had rather, was um, real intense aching, throbbing, hot and cold sensitivity coming from tooth number 18. So pulp testing, percussion testing, all that jazz revealed that this tooth needed a little TLC, right? So we, we decided that uh, we were gonna go ahead, sorry, that camera's shifting. We were gonna go ahead and do um, root canal and a crown for her. Um, and ultimately that turned out, uh, turned out really well, um, at least I thought it did. So moving to the next x-ray here, here are some of the you know, more specific x-rays. Again, you can't really see anything going on around the, the root tip. Maybe perhaps a little bit of um, you know, widening the ligament maybe some radiolucency there that just wasn't really clear. Um, anyway, we ultimately decided based on her symptoms to go ahead and move forward with a root canal um, because of her, her symptoms primarily. So here's the, the post-op, the immediate post-op with the root canal and the crown. Um, this crown incidentally, let me change the color here, this crown right here, got a Sarah Smart style crown. Um, so anyway, the root canal turned out really, really well. You know, it looks like we filled up all the apices. We got a little extra spurt of sealer there out the, the root tip. Looks pretty good for all intents and purposes. So what I like to do is, you know, in, the, in these emergency visits, the final um, thing that I like to say to patients after we've talked about post-op and given them pain control medications if needed is, I'd like to get you back for um, a comprehensive exam to make sure that uh, we're not missing anything else. We wanna make sure that everything's on track to keep your mouth healthy and prevent you from having some situations like this. Um, so she came back for a full exam, right? Um, and when we took the panoramic, and it was several months, I wanna say six months, maybe as, as long as a year, um, we're seeing this. And you can see, I mean, there's obviously a radiolucency there, which is much more significant, much more visible than the, the previous, the pre-op x-ray. So, you know, what, what do we do about this? How do we treat that? Well, since I had done the root canal and it had been, it must have been less than a year, it had been less than a year, I told her that we'd go ahead and retreat it. So, you know, what I had, had used to treat this initial root canal was, um, you know, wave one um, with master cone and gutta percha and some lateral cones if needed. But usually I just use a single uh, master cone um, and use a lot of sealer um, after it's disinfected and make sure I compact it. I heat it up and I compact it backward um, down into the canal structure to make sure it's nice and dense. Boy, that camera's shifting, I'm sorry. Um, so, I felt like it looked pretty good. However, you know, post-op a year later, we've got a radiolucency. So we retreated it. Um, and this is the immediate uh, post-op of the retreat. Um, so my process for retreats is basically the same as for initial treats. Uh, initial root canal treatments, which involves, of course, numbing the patient, make sure, making sure they're comfortable, um, accessing into the canal structure, um, and then using, you know, whether it's gates, glidden files, uh, uh, instruments to, to clear out, and using hand files and disinfectants and solvents as appropriate. Um, and then I like to soak it in the sodium hypochlorite, um, making sure not to overextend and get any out, out the apex, out in this area. Um, and then I also like to soak it in BioPure um, on any retreat. Um, sometimes if you get a significant abscess, I know the literature points to, um, if you have a very large abscess that's visible in a necrotic tooth, uh, there's a two-step process that's recommended, which would involve, um, you know, calcium hydroxide and allowing the patient to soak for a couple of weeks. So we ultimately, we opted um, to go ahead and complete it the same day. I, I let her soak in, in uh, BioPure for maybe a half an hour or so um, to get this end resolved. And in the end, um, she came back just yesterday. This is why it's on my mind for a post-op um, uh, and a, a continuing care exam. And we, we did a post-op on this too. And here is the post-op. It's obvious we've got some healing uh, happening. And this is, a, I wanna say this is right at six months. So we've got a good amount of healing that's that's filling in where that giant abscess was, or radiolucency, I should say, I should say was. And as you can see, the retreat on the end, it looks good, it looks very good. Um, I don't think we found an extra canal, but you can see that obviously these 
are much wider than they were before. You know, normally what I what I go to on a um, initial root canal is a size 25 wave one, the primary, the 25 with a variable taper. This is probably a 45, the white, the size that's white. Um, apparently my stand isn't wanting to hold this camera very well, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, so in the end, the outcome is very positive. Um, I'm hopeful that this tooth will remain um, issue free. Um, we do just have this access filled with composites since this is a Cirasmart, which is a, you know, a reinforced uh, composite material. We just have it filled with composite and it's still adapted very well. You know, I made sure to um, silenate the internal surface of the crown so that it bonds and holds appropriately to that bonding resin. But everything looks good. She's still symptom free. Hopefully it'll, it'll stay that way. Um, anyway, good case. You know, my philosophy, my policy has always been um, one of trying to defer to the patient from the standpoint of charging them less than the absolute maximum, if that makes any sense. Um, I want to make sure that my patients feel like I'm taking care of them. And if we continually, oh, you came in for a root canal and then, you know, four months later, five months later, uh, your root canal is failing, we need to redo it. Now, if there's an indication, there's a reason for it that's rational and ethical, sure. You know, definitely you can justify the charges. But I've found if I can, like in this situation, if I can retreat this root canal for, for this patient without charging her, then sometimes that that goodwill um, that, you know, I invested in by not charging the patient goes a lot further than that extra few hundred dollars that the office would have harvested from, you know, a rebilling or, or charging the patient. And oftentimes the patients ask, well, you know, insurance won't pay for this. Why are you doing this? Um, and it creates it, some challenges. So reasonably, and I'm not trying to say this should happen in every case, but reasonably we want to do our best to um, try to save the patient's money. Because like I said, the goodwill that we're saving um, ends up, the goodwill that we're creating ends up being a great marketing investment, if you will. Um, certainly that's not the reason we do that, but it ends up being, you know, having many, many benefits from the standpoint of, of preserving a positive relationship. And yeah, the patient's going to come back and they may talk about it. You know, I had to have this retreatment done, but the doc didn't charge me for it and all this, this good stuff. And anyway, so that's my thought for the day. Um, again, it was a good case. You know, I feel like we did this patient a good service. Um, you know, starting out and getting her out of pain here initially and then uh, completing the root canal um, and then redoing that with some really positive, you can see the comparison there, really positive uh, results there. So again, thanks for watching. If you have any preferences, any suggestions, any uh, recommendations as far as what you'd like um, videos about, I'm happy to entertain those uh, um, suggestions. Please go ahead and message me um, and share and like. Thanks again. Bye.